Exposure therapy is essentially just reteaching your brain to no longer fear things. While it can seem like this practice or this concept can be overly complicated or super clinical or whatever, I'm gonna do my best to make it as simple as possible so you can reap the benefits of exposures or exposure therapy from the comfort of your own home through something called a behavioral experiment. Hey there, my name is Katie. I'm a licensed anxiety therapist on a mission to help you cultivate peace, presence, and confidence through evidence-based education as well as some meditation practices. My last two educational videos did kind of set the foundation for this one. So if you have not watched those yet, go ahead and do that before jumping in to this one. I will link those here and down in the description. They basically go into the why of this practice of behavioral experimentation, um, why it works for us and why this type of practice of facing our fears is gonna be way more beneficial for long lasting anxiety relief than avoidance ever will. The way that we are able to reteach our brain to no longer fear these things that we fear is to intentionally face these fears, to go towards them, and to allow ourselves to be in the presence of the discomfort of anxiety. We have to feel the anxiety. We just do. I know it's uncomfortable, but we have to feel it in order to tell our brain that, hey, we're feeling this thing, it's really uncomfortable, and I'm gonna survive. I know that I'm going to survive because I'm doing it. So we kind of have to be in that discomfort until the brain starts to realize, hey, even though this is uncomfortable and it's not super pleasant, I'm still alive. I'm doing okay. And that tells it that we don't need to fear as much as we thought we did. This means that when we are choosing fears to intentionally face, we're gonna want them to be uncomfortable enough to where they do elicit that anxious discomfort. But at the same time, we also wanna know for sure that I am going to survive. From our logical brain, we're gonna wanna know for sure that I am gonna survive. In essence, we want to know that it's gonna be manageable discomfort that we're facing. Now, before we ever decide to intentionally face fears, I will say that it's gonna be really beneficial to already have some go-to coping strategies kind of tucked away in your back pocket so you know which strategies you can rely on. Things like breathing techniques or journaling or going for a walk or talking with a loved one or a friend, something that you know that can help you get through that discomfort. So you wanna make sure that you have a few of those before you decide to intentionally elicit anxious discomfort. There are honestly a lot of different ways that we can intentionally face and elicit this anxious discomfort, but today in this video we're really only talking about this practice of behavioral experimentation. With a behavioral experiment, not only are we setting aside that time to intentionally face these fears of ours, but we're also acknowledging the impact of the beliefs that we have, the thoughts that are going through our mind, and the expectations that we have for what that experience experience is going to be like for us. Now I'm going to run through an example for us using one of my own handouts. If you want to go through the process of behavioral experimentation and kind of practice it on your own with this same exact handout, you are more than welcome to. You can grab that for free. I'll leave the link down in the description. Alrighty, so I'm just going to record my screen as we go through this together. So if you choose to download this particular handout, again, it's completely free. I will link it in the description for you, but this is what you're going to see. You can open it in files on your iPad. You can print this out if that is easier. Um, you can also open it in like GoodNotes, those types of apps. So many different options. Anyway, I'm just going to scroll on through here. This is the first page. This is essentially looking at what is going on within us before any type of experiment happens. And then the second page is really exploring what happened during the actual experiment or the actual practice. And we can use it kind of like a debrief, a little bit of a journaling exercise there too. So for this particular fear situation, maybe we just use the example of, you know, there's this fear that we're going to get rejected by our friends. Hopefully you guys can read my handwriting here. Okay, so I'm going to get rejected by a friend that by my friend that is the feared situation. So, how am I going to run this experiment? We can really look at just all of the details here and get as detail oriented as you want to, but essentially you're going to say like how am I going to test 
this theory because in essence this fear is kind of a theory it's an expectation of what you think is going to happen and our brain just easily fixates on that worst case scenario yes for sure i'm going to get rejected so how am i going to test that theory out for this i think i'm just going to say i'm going to ask one of my friends out for coffee or brunch and see what they say and then i'll choose a time and a date as well that i'm going to ask them so I can hold myself accountable here. And then I get to explore what do I expect to happen? Now, if I have this fear of getting rejected, that worst case scenario, that expectation is probably gonna be that they're going to say no. And if I'm expecting them to say no, I'm probably expecting to feel not so great. I'll probably feel pretty anxious, rejected, disappointment, all of the things. Okay, now before we go on to this next page, here is when we kind of take a pause from this particular handout and then we go out and we do the thing. We engage with this practice, this experiment, and we see what happens. And then we come back to this handout and we say, all right, what actually happened during this experiment? So for me, they ended up saying no, but they did reschedule. That day and time just didn't work for them. So maybe I was feeling pretty anxious here when I was doing the asking or kind of leading up to the asking, but afterwards I was feeling pretty good because yes, maybe they said no, but it wasn't in essence a rejection. It was just a, hey, that time doesn't necessarily work out for me. I really wanna hang out with you and we can spend that time together, but we're gonna need to find a different day and time. And then this last part is essentially a kind of a journaling prompt of just exploring thoughts and emotions and what was coming up for you during that whole experiment. Um, and this is just a place where you can process that with yourself. We don't often take the time to do things like this. And so this gives us an opportunity to really reflect on what did I expect to happen? What actually happened? And what does that mean for me? What was the differences then and what that means? And essentially that's pretty much it. Now, I think what I love most about this practice of behavioral experimentation is that not only are we able to intentionally face these fears, but we're also practicing this ability to see other perspectives. So often when we're in that space of anxiety or fearing what's going to happen, our brain is going to those worst case scenarios, right? And it's hard to get out of that kind of anxious downward spiral of what if, what if, what if, right? So what I love about this practice is that it is intentionally kind of leading you through the process of thinking about what else could happen, what is most likely to happen here. And not only that, but it's saying, what am I expecting to happen? And then what did actually happen? So we can compare our expectations, our worst case scenario expectations oftentimes with, okay, that's what I thought was gonna happen, but actually it was not as bad as I thought that it was or that it was going to be. When you practice this regularly, two things are gonna start to happen. One, you're going to notice a decrease in the anxiety that you experience. And two, it's actually gonna to start to become second nature for your brain to see other perspectives outside of the worst case scenario. And this starts to happen actually in real time, which is really cool. This whole practice of behavioral experimentation in essence is rewiring your brain in a nutshell. So I really hope that this practice is beneficial for you. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you.